Hi, and welcome to another video from the CTAG Clinic. My name is Dr. Mike Lloyd, and I'm the Clinic Director. So in today's video, I'm going to be looking a little bit more about derealization, but this time from the perspective of parts in OSDD and DID. Now, derealization is quite a misunderstood or not really very well focused on part of the dissociative spectrum. It's often not really thought to be anything to do with parts or alters, And it, and it seems like it's a sort of a, like a very separate sort of, um, coping strategy in a way or dissociative symptom in its own right. So it sort of happens, but it happens very generally, um, often in response to trigger effects. So we know there's a trauma related and obviously we know it's part of dissociation. But there are possibilities that it can be quite heavily connected to alters within, as I said, OSDD and DID. So other specified dissociative disorder and dissociative identity disorder. So what I'm going to look at very briefly in this video is the way is two reasons why parts might manifest derealization in order to protect the self or the system, whatever it may be, from what might be perceived as an external threat. So this is less about the, the person in a way or the system just having a sort of a generalized derealization response, i.e. something, you know, visually or disturbing taking place in the environment, either with people or places around the person, and much more to do with the sort of a direct influence from parts or alters. So there's two reasons why we could look at this. Now, there's going to be lots of reasons, but I think these ones might be quite prominent and the most likely ones, because if they are related to alters, then a lot of the derealization effects that people can experience might actually be mitigated or reduced if there's a way of being able to reassure alters that actually there's no problem. So I think in terms of the different videos that we've done, for example, around threat and triggers, that if there's a way of being able to understand that the, the trigger is a fake or a sort of a trick, and it's only sort of an implied threat, it's not a real threat, then we can reassure the system and we can sort of bring down the response. This would work in exactly the same way. So the two reasons that we could look at how alters are sort of bringing on derealization for very, very specific reasons are these as follows. And the first is that sort of threat can be quite manifested as a, as a very real thing. So the, the hypervigilant trauma system is extremely common with sort of with, with dissociative disorders. So it's not like a single event type trauma. This is more about the sort of the complex trauma bringing on dissociation. So anxiety is something that is felt very, very keenly and a lot of the time. And there's hypervigilance and hyper awareness resulting from complex trauma. So one of the things that alters can do then is sort of change the fabric or the nature of the world around the person or the, the, the visualization of the environment to make it seem less real. And if it's less real, it can be less frightening and less intimidating or less anxiety provoking. Because any, let's say the trauma has come from, say, uh, horrible experiences, that's going to be extremely real so removing the reality by making the world around the person or the system quite imaginary or unreal can actually reduce the effects of the trauma and reduce the anxiety now it, it doesn't actually do a great deal it simply reduces the level of anxiety because if a person believes that let's for, say for example that they're in a video game rather than reality, then the reality is less bad. That's purely what it comes down to. It's a very basic sort of black and white principle. But if we think about the way that trauma manifests and that we're trying to reduce the effects of trauma as much as possible, anything that can do that can be seized upon and utilized. So changing the fabric of the world around the person, making it seem imaginary, making it seem unreal can reduce the anxiety that reality brings in. So that's one of the first ways that this can actually work. So alters are sort of deliberately creating a sense of unreality around the person. The other one is that some trauma is very, very directly associated to very, very specific things. So, for example, people or places. So a person that's undergone complex trauma, i.e., let's say from abuse, from um, so, from people or in certain locations, for example, there's a, a, a tremendous degree of stress about the possibility that those people in those places might be might be found again or might be taken taken back to or whatever it might be. So instead of going through life and just, you know, sort of potentially seeing the abusers faces or potentially seeing buildings that are triggering it again, what the alters might be able to do 
is being able to sort of like take away faces, take away the, the memory of places. So to be able to sort of directly focus on very, very specific things. So let's say men's faces or buildings associated with a certain type of trauma can be changed, altered, or the memory of that can be removed. So this can link derealization, for example, with dissociative amnesia as well. So what the alters effectively doing is they're targeting very, very specific aspects of the environment and altering the manner in which that they're, they're seen, experienced or remembered. So what that does is it stops people being able to remember faces. It stops being able to sort of know that they're in the same place over and over again or that the familiar world to them, which should be familiar, does not feel familiar because that familiarity is being removed because it reduces the likelihood of a trigger and therefore reduces the likelihood of there being trauma and fear. And if we think about all of these trauma responses designed to protect the individual, designed to protect the system, whatever, then any of these things could make sense if we look at it in those terms. Now, that's not, this is not necessarily to say that either of these two things is going to be correct for anybody because some people simply have derealization and depersonalization type responses. They don't have internal world systems as related to OSDD and DID. But where OSDD and DID does exist, it is entirely possible that some alters are framing derealization as a specific trauma response. And therefore, if we can help the alters be, by reassuring them, by giving them a sense of safety, we might be able to reduce the derealization experience because that is going to reduce the distress because derealization is an extremely distressing condition for people to have. So I hope this makes sense. I hope this has been useful. It's simply a way of being able to frame and understand one of these dissociative uh, uh, symptoms, part of the dissociative spectrum that is not particularly well understood because it's, there's simply less written about it. There's less understood about it. And it may well be that this is one of the things that we that we see without knowing it. But if we have a sense that this is taking place, it allows us to be curious. It allows us to ask more questions and develop a deeper understanding. So I hope this one has been helpful in, in really sort of looking at the link between alters and derealization and uh, I really would be interested in hearing people's comments uh, in the video afterwards as always always good to read them and see what's going on and see what people make of these videos and uh, obviously in between now and the next video please do take great care Hi, I just wanted to add in that <coughs> I had a lot of hay fever symptoms during the making of this video. So if I seemed a bit snuffly and a bit um, bunged up, that's, in, that's exactly why. Um, it's been really lovely that people have, have expressed such concern when I wasn't well recently. Um, I'm completely fine now. Um, but obviously summer is now hit and I'm experiencing a load of hay fever. So it just goes from one thing to another. So uh, thank you everybody for commenting on the previous video uh, where I wasn't particularly well. It was really lovely to, to read such nice things uh, from so many people. So I do appreciate it and thank you ever so much. And I hope this video was a little bit easier to watch, even though um, I'm all bunged up and snuffly. Thanks ever so much.